Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about entry-level salaries in cybersecurity. So I've made a list of the most common roles that you typically will get as an entry-level cybersecurity professional. And today we're going to be going over those roles as well as the typical average salary for those roles. So number one on this list is an SOC analyst. So I'm going to be sharing two average salaries just because many different websites online have different numbers. And I definitely think that sources like Glassdoor have much older information compared to newer job and salary reporting websites but just to give you an idea of the ranges the average salary for an SOC analyst on Glassdoor is about $65,000 a year while the average salary for an SOC analyst on salary.com is about $95,000 per year so this is a $30,000 difference in salary and that is and that is obviously very large but just considering that one website might have older information that doesn't account for inflation and everything that's been going on with the job market today I do think that both of these numbers give a better reflection of what the job market kind of looks like. And I'm sure there are also SOC analysts who make below 65,000, but also ones that make over 95,000. So just a brief overview of what SOC analysts do in their day-to-day. -day. SOC analysts typically work in a SOC or a security operations center. This is typically going to be a company's frontline defense of any incidents, any any alerts that come through, any malicious attacks that are, that are found to be targeting the company. They're typically going to be one of the first in the company to respond to any kind of cyber threat in general and a lot of their jobs may tie back to watching any alerting dashboards checking for any anomalies and different logs there may be user alerts or things forwarded to an SOC analyst to verify to see if they're actually malicious or if they're false positives so the SOC analyst is essentially the building block of the defensive blue team of any company your company may have an in-house SOC or they may have a third-party vendor and have their SOC outsourced it all depends on what company you go to but if it's a company that needs to follow the model and they have very specific needs then they'll probably build their own SOC and they're most likely going to be a bigger company or a financial services company some company that really needs a good cybersecurity team to defend to defend most likely sensitive information around personal information people's people's financial information health information as well as anything government or defense related otherwise if you're a smaller company then then you may outsource your SOC or you may just have an internal cybersecurity team that kind of wears multiple different hats and also takes takes on the role of an SOC team. An SOC analyst and a cybersecurity analyst can sometimes be used, can sometimes refer to the same exact role. So it really depends on what company you go into and the types of things that you will be doing in that role. But I'll be talking more about security analysts later on in this video. All right, next role on this list is a junior pen tester. So we came from the entry level blue team role that everyone wants to get into and now into the red team role that many people want to get into in their early career. So as someone who's worked on the defensive and the offensive side, in my previous job, I was in a rotation program and one of my rotations was on a pen testing team and I was basically working on different pen testing assessments internally for my company. And based on Glassdoor, the average salary for a junior pen tester in the United States is about $81,000 a year and the average salary on salary.com is about $91,000 per year. So a much shorter range, but again, there are people going to be falling within this range as well as outside of this range, depending on the company, the sector, your personal skills and experience, as well as the location or if you're working remotely. So if you're watching this video, you probably already know what a pen tester does or a penetration tester does. And they essentially are the ones who want to look for vulnerabilities in an application or anything that they're testing for any potential attack vectors that may be vulnerable to any potential attacks or exploits before an actual attacker finds them and exploits them. So when I was on my pen testing team, I was doing about three to five assessments per week, which sounds like a lot, but as a junior pen tester, you're definitely not looking as in depth compared to an ethical hacking team or a red team. So it really does depend on the role you're in. But as a junior pen tester, I was really just looking for our most common vulnerabilities and vulnerabilities focusing on data loss prevention, anywhere you could exfiltrate data, stealing cookies, the OWASP top 10, probably vulnerabilities that you already have heard of and know about compared to the more advanced red teamer roles where they're probably looking for more niche exploits and things that you typically won't think of or typically won't always be on the OWASP top 10. And that's why I think joining as a junior pen tester is an awesome way to learn because you also get exposed to the more senior members of your team who may be able to teach you or mentor you depending on where you want to take your career. But again, that really is just one half of pen testing. The other half is writing the actual reports of the pen test and the things you found, the steps you needed to 
mistake to recreate your findings as well as any breadcrumbs or screenshots to show the actual dev team or your stakeholders what they need to fix and how they can verify that it's been fixed. If anything, the documentation part will probably take just as long as the actual pen test, depending on how many findings that you actually have for that pen test or whatever application that you're testing for. I personally only tested web applications, but you may be on a team where you're pen testing actual hardware, actual servers, or different endpoints that aren't just web application based. And of course, that would also change up your pen test reports, the findings that you'll have, the actual vulnerabilities that you're probably going to be looking for. So all things to keep in mind when you're thinking about going into pen testing, you want to know what area you actually want to be niche in, or maybe you just want to try a whole bunch of different things. And that is okay to you. All right, next role on this list is a help desk analyst. So on average on Glassdoor, a help desk analyst makes about makes about $47,000 a year. And on salary.com, the average salary is about $38,000 per year. So as a help desk analyst, you're typically going to be helping people. You're typically going to be helping people with different issues, whether it's connection issues, trying to troubleshoot any access issues, and basically dealing with a lot of things that are related to the IT or information technology side of the house. Help desk analysts can also be called IT analysts or service desk analysts, which is why you'll probably find it different ranging salaries for each of these titles, but they're probably going to have a similar job and responsibilities for the roles. But if you're someone who's currently a student or going into their early career, having help desk experience is going to be very helpful because it really is the epitome of, of building problem solving skills. For many employees across your company, if there's something wrong with access, connection issues, VPN issues, configurations, anything like that, these kinds of requests and tickets typically first go into IT help desk and there could be so many different kinds of questions and problems that come up throughout the day that you have to work to solve and all of those become huge learning opportunities. The breadth of topics that are covered within IT Help Desk really can teach you a lot about the rest of the infrastructure or the systems in your company and those are all things that you're going to have to learn on the job and down the line they may help you a lot more in whatever roles that you that you may decide to pursue in the future as well. So definitely don't sleep on Help Desk roles especially if you're someone maybe who doesn't even know what role they want to go into in cybersecurity yet. Help Desk is a great entry point where you're able to to test out a bunch of different things, learn and take on tickets from a breadth of problems that you'll probably see coming up throughout your day. Our next role on this list is an IT auditor. The average salary for an IT auditor in the US on Glassdoor is about $70,000 per year. And the average salary found on salary.com is about $84,000 per year. So this is also a pretty good range with about with about a $14,000 range. And I've made videos in the past on my channel about IT auditors. And I know many of you guys may not always be interested in that, in that auditing and compliance side of things. But of course, it is one of the most important things in cybersecurity, considering we are such a regulated sector that has compliance and certification needs and all these things go back to IT auditing whether it's an internal auditing team or an external auditing team and of course that'll definitely change up a little bit of your job if you are working for if you're working for a company with an internal auditing team and your job is basically to audit the things in your company like applications processes everything under the sun especially if you're a highly regulated area like financial services or healthcare and you want to look for any holes or gaps or areas of improvement that can be updated before the external auditors come in and do the and do the official audits that are going to impact your company's actual business and and those are the ones that your company's customers are actually going to care about and ask for. So essentially, as an IT auditor, your job is to make sure that your company's IT systems, infrastructure, processes, and everything in between are running as efficiently and smoothly as possible without any gaps or missing controls that an external auditor may scrutinize or find in the future. It's kind of like an extra insurance layer to make sure that your internal auditing team is able to check that things are okay before it gets to an external auditor, before you go into an official audit because those findings are going to be on paper and following you forever and anything that you can do beforehand to repair aka doing an internal audit with your IT auditing team is really going to help your odds of the external auditors not being able to not being able to find anything questionable or any gaps or controls that a potential customer or stakeholder might find concerning. 
Typically, external auditors work for a consulting firm like the big four, and internal auditors will work for the individual companies that they are actually auditing. But of course, if your company doesn't have an internal auditing team, you may have another external vendor or test audits depending on the structure of the contract and how your audits are set up. Or you may hire some kind of external vendor to help walk you through that auditing process and make sure that you have certain things in place before the external auditing team comes in. So essentially, IT auditors are going to come in, check your systems, for any flaws, any gaps, any concerns, anything, any red flags basically that may come up in their findings. And then typically at the end of it, they'll give you an audit report and list out all of the things that were compliant as well as the things that may have potential concerns or gaps. And those will be your areas of improvement or things that you need to remediate. All right, the last rule on this list is incident response. The average salary for an incident response analyst in the US on Glassdoor is about $75,000 a year. And on salary.com, the average is about $68,000 per year. So incident responders typically also also work in the SOC or they're either a part of the SOC or they or they work very closely with the SOC team. If an SOC analyst does find that an alert or a log has created an incident, then they typically pass it to the incident response team who are the ones who actually deal with the incidents as they come in. Incident response analysts typically have some certifications or knowledge about the incident response process and every company is going to have it a little bit different, but there is going to be a general incident response process that is going to be typical for most for most cybersecurity teams and as an incident response analyst your job is to make sure that you get the right stakeholders involved everything documented meeting minutes calendar invites logs conversations chats first of all having all that documented in one place and then of course leading the resolution of the incident with all the people that are needed to resolve and then once the incident is resolved then you may go on and invite some kind of retrospective or lessons learned or takeaways that the company can then use to then improve their incident response process or the speed at which they resolve issues and basically constantly improving your incident response process. So I definitely say that incident response can be a high stress job, especially if you're working at a company that has long on-call hours or weekend on-call hours. Remember anything can go wrong at any time and, and you may be called late at night or during holidays or on weekends. But of course there are people out there who enjoy working under those types of environments, those kinds of high stakes, high stress environments. It definitely can be very high visibility as well just because you are the one leading those incident resolutions getting the right people together and communicating in a timely manner these are all very important things as an, as an incident response analyst that and of course maintaining all of your documentation which i mentioned in the beginning because if an auditor comes in and asks for the documentation around your incident response process and maybe the last few incidents that you've had then they want to see everything that you have documented down all the logs conversations that you have saved everything is going to be important when it comes to an audit and that's why having a good incident response team is also very integral for a company to pass their audits first of all as well as make sure that no actual breaches occur or they do occur then they're quarantined quickly and as efficiently as possible before it spreads to the rest of your company's network or systems so it's definitely one of those high stakes jobs that are very important to the company but i do think it can be stepped up a notch in terms of stress levels compared to an soc analyst who also is on the blue team side or the reactive side of cybersecurity. All right, that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions or any potential roles in cybersecurity that are entry level that you would add to this list. Again, these are average salary numbers and there will be people who are making less than the range as well as higher than the range. And if you guys haven't seen my video on my cybersecurity salary as a security analyst coming out of college, my salary was $115,000 per year. And I'm not saying that to sound braggy, but I do want to put out there that these numbers are averages. And if you're living in a higher cost of living city like New York, which I was, or if you're someone who's in a sector that really needs good cybersecurity talent, then companies will give you higher salaries than the averages that you'll see online. So just because a company gives you a number for a salary and it matches the online averages that you're seeing doesn't mean that you shouldn't negotiate. You should always negotiate and ask for what you're worth and just know that these numbers are really just anchors, not the official rule of the salary that you need to get if you're going into an SOC analyst role or a IT auditor role. And I'll link that video below on how I got my six-figure salary out of college as an entry-level cybersecurity professional in the description below. I will soon be making a cybersecurity course on how to get your first job in cybersecurity so look out for that it is coming towards the end of this year and i'll be spending a lot of time filming and editing that for 
the next two months or so so if you see me being a little bit absent on youtube that is probably why but i'll try my best to get back to you guys and of course feel free to join our discord channel we have our whole community there so if you have any questions about startup security that I haven't answered in my videos then you can feel free to join our discord channel and start up a conversation with everyone else there as well all right if this video was helpful to you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 pm let me know in the comments if you have any video topics or suggestions that you might want to see in the future and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye